So in this module, we talked about the two different types of alabaster. And the things that these two have in common in terms of their physical properties is that they are both relatively soft, which allows for carving of intricate shapes and nice flowing curves um, with relatively less effort compared to some of the other uh, materials we've been discussing uh, up until now. And then um, the, the other uh, property that they share in common is that both of these uh, materials are very much soluble in even very weak acid, uh, such that they're really ideally suited for sculptures that are going to remain indoors for decorative pieces, things like vases, um, wall panels that are going to be used for indoor purposes. Generally speaking, you're not going to see alabaster used for pieces that are going to be spending their time outside yeah. um, because they'd melt, and that's not a good thing. And dry climates help. <laughs> yes, dry climates. <laughs> Egypt, you could do a lot yeah. of things in ancient Egypt that we can't get away with today. Yes, definitely. Um, I hope that uh, in this module you've had a chance to, to really uh, start to appreciate the aesthetic qualities of the alabaster. And of course, in the English alabasters, uh, a lot of the patterning that you see here would have been covered up uh, with the polychromy on those pieces. It might also have added a little bit to their permanence because you would be sort of sealing the surface with uh, these paints and, and providing them with a little bit more durability. Um, but it, it truly is a, a magnificent material, um, one that is abundant and fairly uh, easy to obtain so we don't have some of the, the same considerations that we've had before, but still a very important material for the history of art.